the work that I do is to study the atmospheric circulation. I started out being very interested in that. And then it turned out that to understand the atmospheric circulation, I had to figure out what clouds do to that circulation. And I actually started studying other planets first. But I finally decided to study the Earth because there's much more observational uh, evidence available to try to solve that problem. The atmosphere is a fluid, and actually on Earth is a complicated system because it has two fluids, the ocean and the atmosphere. And fluids vary on all scales, essentially from centimeter to global. And to understand what's going on, you have to look at events at all those different scales at the same time. And the only observing system we have that sees all the scales is satellite constellation. Even one satellite is not enough. You need a whole bunch of them to see the whole globe from weather scale right on up to the planetary scale and see how the variations happen, how the processes are working. From a climate perspective, probably the biggest question is what the response of the system actually will be. We're not sure that the elaborate models we have respond to a change the way the real atmosphere will respond. So uh, there are many complicated mathematical theories about different kinds of systems and how they respond, but we don't know which one applies to the atmosphere. So that's kind of the biggest question because we don't know what the climate change is going to be like in detail. On a more day-to-day basis, one of the real questions is why doesn't, the atmosphere has to rain a certain amount of water out. That's part of its energy cycle. But why doesn't it just do that sort of continuously as drizzle everywhere? Instead it collects the water and rains as an occasional storm and occasionally a very severe storm. And we don't know why that is and we haven't got a very good idea of how to forecast that or how to say why does it arrange itself in one way and not another way? So those are two, I would say, critical questions for our society at the moment. Meteorological satellites were actually designed uh, back in the 60s, and we started flying them routinely in the 70s for one of the purposes was to see what the clouds looked like and what they were doing. Clouds have always been important to the forecast, but believe it or not, No one was doing anything with that data quantitatively. I became involved in the World Climate Research Program when it was founded back in 1980 to convert the satellite data to quantitative information. So that's the new thing we've done. It's, you know, taken a long time because we're changing our, what we focus on. But the first thing that we had to do was describe how the clouds, what their properties are and how they vary. We didn't really know that. We had, from surface observations and old climatologies, we had an idea of where it was cloudy and where it was clear, but that's all we had. So the satellites have now finished, if you will, that basic description of where are the clouds, how do they vary, what are their basic properties. And with that information, we can actually determine how they affect the radiation balance of the planet. So that was our first goal. Now we're moving on and we needed the vertical structure information. Now we're moving on to the question of when does a cloud produce precipitation and why and how much. The situation is that we have now begun using these satellites. We have merged the satellite information with the more usual aircraft and and, uh, balloon experiment information. So we've gotten to a certain point in the problem. And the next stage is really to finish the question I posed at the beginning, which is how does all of this interact to produce the day-to-day weather variation and how will that climate respond to the changes that humans are causing?